So obviously, since we have two such powerful functions as normal CDF and inverse norm, we really want to know when we can apply them. And the answer is you can only apply them if your data set is normal. So we need a way to quickly decide whether our data set is normal or not if it wasn't told to us in the problem somewhere. And to do that, we're going to read a normal probability plot. This is a, a graphical display of the data in a different way than you are used to. And what you want to look for is you want to look for the normal probability to plot to be approximately linear. If it's drawn with a computer, then you want your numbers, your dots to be within the boundaries. So for example, I have a group of Brigham Young University, Idaho students collected data in November 2005 on the speed of vehicles traveling through a construction zone on a state highway where the posted speed was 25 miles per hour. The recorded speed of 14 randomly selected vehicles is given below. So here they are. All right, and then we want to assess the normality of these data. We want to figure out whether the data are normal or not. So what you want to do is you want to look at the graph. It's going to be given to you kind of drawn like this. And you want to look at the dots and see, are they mostly following a line? That is, are all the dots within those two boundary lines on the edges? If they are, then the data was normal. And this data set was. This was normal because all the points sort of follow a line. They are within the boundary lines. And those boundary lines being those outer lines that the computer very kindly draws for you. All right, here we have the National Center for Education Statistics um, 2000 School Survey on Crime and Safety gives data on several aspects of public safety in public elementary and secondary schools. One indicator of safety in a school is the number of out-of-school suspensions in a given year. 23 schools with at least one suspension were randomly selected, and the counts of the number of out-of-school suspensions are given below. Use a pro normal probability plot to assess whether the sample data could have come from a population that is normally distributed. So here are all the data from all these different schools, and there you see them drawn. Well, that is very much not normal, right? Because those dots do not follow a line. They are very much outside of the boundaries. So that is not normal. The original data set, excuse me, was not normal. All right, it's pretty much as simple as that. For the most part, they're going to be given to you. However, you might have to draw one yourself. So let me show you how to do that with your calculator. So we have here on a data set, these are the average daily temperatures outside McDivitt Hall, which is where my office is, in various months. So I'm going to grab my calculator. I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to go to Stat, Edit. I'm going to clear out these old columns for L1 and L2. I'm going to type that new data set they gave me in L1. So let me grab this right here. So 26, oops, there we go. 26, 34, 58, 72. All right, so I've got the numbers all typed in. Let me make this bigger now. So I'm going to go to, all right, this is going to be a little confusing. So what I want to do is I want to look at a stat plot. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to y equals. Yeah, and I thought so. I've got some old equations in there that I don't want. So I'm going to clear those out. I just kind of pressed clear and then went down and pressed clear. Everything's cleared out. So all of this is off and out and cleared out. Now I'm going to go to stat plot. It's above your y equals, so second y equals. So first you go to y equals, clear out any old stuff you got in there. And now you go to second y equals and go to your stat plot, number one. All right, first thing I want to do is I want to press enter to turn it on. And then I'm going to go down here to the type. And you actually want that last type over on the right. Even if it's an 84 that has, it looks like there's two rows worth of um, problems, don't be fooled. It's one row, you've got to go over to the right to turn it on. It should look like it's constantly climbing up. All right, then I want my data list to be L1. That's good. That's where my data was. And my data axis is X, that's fine. I want the box mark. And then because I'm working with a color calculator, I'm going to leave it blue. Then I'm going to press zoom nine. Zoom nine is zoom stat. Oh, it's up at the top there. It makes it fit the stat plot. You just turned on your stat plot. So if you do zoom stat, it'll fit to that stat plot like that. 
And then you just kind of have to decide, does that look mostly like it follows a line? I'd say, yeah, I mean, it's not too bad. It's got a little curve over here, but that's okay. So that's the best you can do. The calculator won't draw the boundary lines for you. So the best you can do is hope for, eh, it looks pretty linear. So let me write that up. All right, so there you go. You would always, of course, draw a sketch of what your graph looked like on your calculator. And the points look to be forming a line or appear, I should say, appear to be forming a line. See the sketch on the right? Therefore, it appears that this data set is approximately normally distributed. Should be a comma. All right, we're all done. Oh, let me just show you real quick what it looks like with a regular T84. If you have a color calculator, you can pretty much stop watching right now. Um, it's okay. So let me just show you what this looks like. So again, you go to Stat Edit, just like with the other calculator. Um, 26, 34. type in those data values and then you go to stat plot actually first go to y equals I don't have any equations in there so I'm good then I'm going to go to stat plot pick number one and I want to press enter to turn it on go down here and you have to go to the right I know it looks like you can go down but if you go down it'll hop you look to the X list down there which isn't what I want so I'm gonna go up and go right 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 when I get to that last graph and press enter and then it's asking me is my data list L1 yes it is my x-axis is X that's right all good and of course I don't have a color option here and then I'm just like before I'm gonna hit zoom and you want zoom number nine oh, it's way up there it's zoom stat is what you're looking for because you just turned on the stat plot so nine and it'll make that graph which more or less matches the color graph that we had from the color calculator right here. See? It's just not quite as pretty. All right, so that's how to do it with a regular 84. I'll see you back here for Chapter 8.